there already are laws against um, rape, sexual assault, physical assault and murder. What I'm trying to take away is the legal framework in which those things are much, much more likely for, us, for a group of women. And so ending the demand side, if you criminalise the demand side, which is one option, it's not the only option, there's other, other ways, which is shifting attitude and, after, attitudes, but the Nordic model, which criminalises the demand side, that actually says it's a criminal offence to pay for sex, full stop. Now, once you make that clear and you say the, the supply side, that we, want, we want that decriminalised. We want women not to be penalised because they're often put into positions where they feel they've got no other option. I don't want them criminalised. I want the demand side criminalised because that's where the problem lies. That's where the responsibility is. That's where the risk of sexual assault comes from. The risk of sexual assault doesn't come from being a woman. The risk of sexual assault comes from being in a situation where the man is able to take that decision. And I want responsibility for that, putting on that person. So there's plenty of evidence, good research evidence for about the Nordic model coming from those countries. Counter evidence, the New Zealand model, which has been mentioned. Um, I recently spent um, most of a day in Parliament and a symposium on prostitution at which women who had exited prostitution from that very New Zealand model, in fact, a woman who'd been involved originally in the campaign for everything to be legalised, she spoke about what her experiences were and how common they were and how putting a legal framework around them made it seem as though this was a job, so say, like any other. And she said, when the job involves certain acts, which I'm not even sure you want me to say on, on camera, when they involve sexual acts that can hurt, that can frighten, that can cause real damage, or more, even if they don't, even if they aren't causing damage, that you want to be able to refuse consent for those, when it's predicated, when it's put into the whole business of the job, that that person has paid and it's treated as a job like any other, then the whole, the whole conceptualisation, the whole framework around it shifts into us accepting that that's okay, that once they have paid, they should be able to get what they want. What having a red light district does is it says there are some areas of our cities that we're going to say, that's basically for men. And I'm going to be specific here. That's for men to be able to say, do and act in any way they want sexually towards women. I've walked through that area and I have had extraordinary amounts of sexual harassment. You could say, OK, don't go to that area then. But that's effectively saying that that's a whole area of town that we're not allowed to go to. And, you know, I, I don't know whether we really want to live that way. Is that how we want to live? Other parts of the Netherlands have gone for completely separate no-go zones, which is just for prostitution and nothing else. I don't, don't really see how that makes women safer. And there's good evidence to show that it doesn't make women safer. But finally, I'll just leave you with this thought. There were some opinion polls done um, a couple of years ago in the Netherlands about whether or not legalising prostitution shifted attitudes. And yes, it had made people feel differently about a, pro a prostituted woman. If she was living next door, would you feel stigma towards her? Were you, would you think she was less of a person? No, they said no, she wouldn't. But what that poll didn't ask is how they would feel if it was their daughter. And if we're really saying that this is a job like any other, what we're effectively saying is it's a job that a careers advisor can say to a young woman, have you ever thought of being a prostitute? It's a job that we could put up a notice in the local job centre and say, wanted women for purposes of sex. Are we really saying that's where we want to go?